Right, we're back. We are, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while since a roundup. Um, we've got three projects worth here. We have a Fulgrim, one of the, res the new resin Fulgrim models. Very exciting. Um, we have this unique custom service Chaos Knights project. They're which, just absolutely mad. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> I, I, it, I don't even know where to start with that, but we'll get there. Um, and then we have an incredible platinum painted Silent King. What a model. Um, which we'll, we'll finish the video off. That on. is going to be the dessert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to try and not keep looking at that. We do have some <laughs> other, we do have some other um, very well painted, exciting models to talk about, um, including obviously Fulgrim. We're going to start with this, so I'll pass this over to you. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the one thing, I was trying to think of something they all have in common. They're all going to be very difficult to, to hold. To hold, yeah. There that's is, that, that's, that's the, the thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, the instruction from the client on this was basically build it like the box art, paint it like the box art, base it like the box art. They just wanted it as close to the box art as possible within our silver level. So it's all you, silver You could level say painted. perfection to the box art. Yeah. yeah you could, yeah. yeah. It's, Some it's, might say. It's, um, it's at our silver level, which is obviously a display quality. So it's not quite box art quality, which would be gold level for us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts? I absolutely love the model. Um, I really, really have always liked the Demon Primarchs uh, in sort of like the lore and narrative. So to, to see them starting to get models through Forge Worlds uh, is, is just really great to see. I think some of my favourite things from the model just, just overall are the how kind of aggressive he looks. And I really like the, the length of the tail. I know it sounds really silly, but it, it, they've really not skimped on kind of like the stature of the model. Like if you, it's really coiled if you actually think how tall he would be if he was at full sort of height. Um, he would be absolutely massive compared to a normal Marine. Um, I'd quite like to see that version of the model. What, just really fully, tall? just the, the tail completely vertical, just him completely up as far as possible. Yeah, it'd be really, it'd be huge, Joe, like with the wings. A lot of pins involved. A lot, a lot of pins, one, yeah. Up, up right, yeah. Up right, up yeah. Right. The, the the thing that, that I really like and what, and what Rich, who's painted this, has done is just use a lot of really great colours on the miniature to match that box art. So, for example, the, the deep shades, obviously, of the purple, and then you've got the vibrancy of like all of the green gems that are across the, the model. So if you look on the spear, at the end of the spear, there's this lovely, vibrant green gem just on there, um, which leads me nicely onto the metallics. Um, Rich has done a great job in adding loads of tonal variants on those metallics to match the box art. Uh, and just add real interest to sort of all those sort of like exquisite details that are on there. Obviously being in Empress, uh, being Fulgrim and obviously being of the Empress Children and Slanesh, um, it's all about perfection. So you can see that the amount of kind of detail work that's not only just on, on him and his Baroque, Baroque armour, but also just on all of the different parts of the weapons and every aspect of the detail. If we move around the back here, you've got these really lovely feathers that are just quite nicely sort of put on the rear part of the model just to add a bit of different kind of interest to there. Um, there's lots of intricacy on those and Rich has done a great job of just picking out all of those little feathers individually on the back of the miniature as well, which is just great. Um, I noticed that there's a, a fallen Imperial Fist on the base as well. So there's various scatterings of like, Imperial Fist armour on the base, which is quite interesting. Um, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, if you're a big uh, reader of all the novels, I think that's because obviously there's quite a big battle on Terra between the Fists and the Emperor's Children. Um, my favourite detail on the model is actually on the front. It's the kind of Sonesh faceplate that's just on this front part of the model here. Um, and the amount of time that Rich has put into adding all the interest on those details, the eyes and things, is just really great. Um, There's so much stuff on that model that I'm not even noticing it until you're pointing it out. Like, I haven't even really paid attention to that face thing, or that face plate on the front there. Yeah, it's got it's got loads of little bits, but even on the even on the tip, the heart of the, the the spear, there's like a like a demonic face on the spear, like and, and the teeth are kind of like infused into the into the blade as if the, the blade's alive and it's got like its own personality or character, which is quite interesting. Yeah, um, there's so many like tiny little things on these full twelve character models, aren't there? Yeah, even even on the back, like another little thing, and this is just as I'm spinning it around, this is something that I hadn't noticed prior to even even getting it for this showcase is is that all the faces, like the face plates that are dangling on these on this cape, each of the faces is pulling a different different face. <laughs> it's just it's just the intricacy that's on there is is really, really interesting. Um, but talking about the, the other parts of the model, so the flesh, um, this really lovely sort of purpley vibrant pink um, pink like flesh is actually really great uh, and just balances the, the darker tones of the snake body uh, and the armour really well. Um, not only has Rich done a great job of toning it all and highlighting it all, but even, even the actual sculpt itself, you can see on the wings as we rotate it around, you can see all the really crazy levels of intricate little detail that are on those wings, or the little sort of, I don't know what to call them, but the, the sort of like, the, almost like the folds or the wrinkles in that skin. It's just a really, really complex miniature that has so much to even, even begin sort of looking at, let alone painting. Um, if we move on to probably the main feature of the miniature, which is obviously Fulgrim's face, 
Um, there's a lot of focus in that face, which is really interesting. Like it's a really kind of like calm yet aggressive kind of like overall composition of the, the pose and the way that he's, he's posed. Um, I love all the little uh, braided details in the hair as well, just saying that kind of like, it still retains that kind of like elegant kind of like detail work on the miniature and actually just a bit of his original persona about being always trying to look like perfect or perfection, which is quite, quite interesting. Um, and obviously he has multiple arms now, so it's not just a two-armed model. He's obviously got four arms, wielding the double sword, the spear, and then he's got like this really evil looking claw as well, which is great. Um, but the one thing for me that just really sells it is, is that nod back to the original Legion, which is the, the giant wing on the chest plate, just still having that quite Emperor's like, symbol just on the, on the chest as well, which is just really interesting. Uh, so that's uh, this awesome Fulgrim Primark miniature. Uh, we'll do the we'll do the knights next. Let's do the knights again. Yeah. I don't really know where to start with these. Uh, what ones do you want to start with? Let's got go the, the let's, smaller one or the taller. Let's one? go with the taller one because it looks more like an armager. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the thing with this job was um, there are obviously two custom chaos knights. Yeah. Um, so they are. Although I think they're initially, I mean, on the second one, you'll see it even less so, but I think they're initially built from armagers. I yeah. imagine they're going to be used as, as war dogs or something like that, the chaos equivalent, basically. Yeah. Um, the only, even though they're like heavily unique and heavily converted, um, the only real instruction uh, that Charlie got, by the way, it was completed by Charlie, both the sculpting and the painting, um, was two images that the client sent and basically yeah. said, I want one of them like that, and I want one of them like that, and away you go. Um, so it really is like, maybe we can get the, the images up on screen um, or, or something like that. Um, I don't know who to, I don't know where the images are pulled from, so we can't credit. So if anyone knows where they're us, from, yeah. um, please let us know. We were just supplied them by the client, but we, it really is important for you to see the images so that you know um, where the idea for these two models come from. Also, interestingly, before I get to your thoughts, this is, I think, the first job that I can remember that has every single service that we offer within it. Oh, right, so okay. there's magnetizing, there's freehand, there's painting, there's the sculpt building, there's sculpting, there's converting, it's everything. Everything is on the, these two models. So hopefully this kind of shows what, what is achievable with us. At the you, extreme at end. At the extreme end, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is what you can do uh, at, at Siege, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it is a bit of a mad one. So I hadn't seen the images, as in I'm not, I've seen the images obviously that the client provided, but I hadn't seen those images within 40K ever before. Um, so seeing the models come to life from, from those images has been an absolute pleasure because it's, it's something totally different than, than what you would normally see here on a daily basis at, at Siege. Um, yeah, Charlie has done, I don't even know where to start with what Charlie's done on this because just creating the models and getting, getting the models to come to life from absolutely nothing but parts and, and sculpting and all the other bits and bobs that are involved with, with models like this. Um, just that work alone, before we even talk about the paint job that's been put on it, is just, is just absolutely remarkable and, and really, really well done as well. Like it looks, the thing I always like is once the model's painted, it literally looks like something that, that you could just get, if that makes sense. Yeah, it you looks know. like it would be a regular kit that's available. Yeah, them. it's just, it's really cool. Um, where to start on this thing? I mean, look, really great colors, first of all, that blue gold sort of split, which is just lovely. Really sort of elegant looking with all that fil like free-handed inlaid like filigree on all the panels and things. Um, again, this one uses, yeah, just from looking at the feet, it uses parts from armages, but at the same time, there's lots of other things which have just been completely done from scratch on the model. Um, I love the kind of like three heads. It's almost like it has three different personalities, which is quite interesting. And then you've got those three different claws just over the top of the carapace. Uh, almost like each one is individually controlled by one of the heads and they've got like fighting for, for control of the overall thing, which is quite interesting. Um, if we move around the side, you'll see there's a lovely kind of sculpted Aquila that's just been done on that shoulder pad as well, um, just to add on that sort of extreme detail on there. Um, the other thing that I do like is the magnetizing on this has is, is been just really cleverly done. So like all of these parts are actually interlocking. So the way that they go together, once they're in and locked in, the magnets obviously hold them in, but the actual components that Charlie sculpted do actually hold them in place really well. So it's just clever use of magnetizing and also clever use of the, the actual parts and the blocks that are, that are attached to them. So they all are in there really firmly. They're all attached extremely well. 
Um, if we jump around the front again, you can see the intricacy of those cables that go into the skulls on the head. So there's like the, all these tiny little cables that have been placed into there. Um, and there's just a lot of effort put into the individual little details on the model. Um, if we move around the back, most of the, de most of the ornate details are obviously on the front, but then around the back, we've got this extreme area of metal work. Lovely with that Colt Mechanica symbol as well, which is just really well done. Um, and all the sharp highlighting and things that have been done over the metals to add interest and just really shape those metals and highlight those metals to a really clean fashion. Um, the thing I do really like as well from this is the kind of like the cowlings on the weapons. So you've got this one here, for example, that's got this kind of like screaming uh, faceplate on it, which is quite interesting. So this, this one just here on this cowling. Um, really, really intricate little detail that again has been completely uh, created and sculpted to go on that miniature. Um, and again, Charlie's done a great job with that. We, on the painting, the majority of it, as you can see, those really rich, warm gold tones across all the areas of the model on that trim uh, and all the details, uh, and that rich, deep royal blue uh, to contrast that, those uh, the, the sort of yellowish, brownish golds on there. Um, but on top of all the paint job and all the sculpting, the client's also had, as we've said, a lot of freehand uh, sort of um, filigree inlays, which again, individually for those, just does take a considerable amount of time just to add those on in the sharp kind of fashion that you can see there. Um, but that's just this awesome first custom armager uh, that we've created for our client. Um, if you want to take the other one. Yeah. This one, <laughs> this one again, completely from an image that they sent in. Um, and oh both painted to our silver level as well by the way i don't think i mentioned that yeah no um obviously the, the other one has a lot of free hand on it too but um this one even more unique i would say it looks even less like a typical um yeah it's, it's it's completely different and obviously not being a walker it being tracked as well so uh the other one had free hand but this one still has a lot of weathering across all of the armor paneling uh, across the sort of carapace and the arms and even the cowling on the uh, lower tracked portion as well um, really reminds me of, for, for those that are of a certain vintage, if you remember an old film from War of the Worlds, not the new one with Tom Cruise, but just the older film. It really reminds me of one of the, the sort of alien sort of vehicle things from, from War of the Worlds, uh, which is interesting with those kind of like arms over the top of the, the carapace with those red lenses or lasers on top there. It's quite interesting. Um, same again, you know, we've got a, a really good difference of colour. You've got the darker portion on the tracked area and then you've got that lighter, almost like beige kind of armour panelling just on the top half. But Charlie's done a great job of actually making all the areas of detail really uh, aged. There's a, a copper plate here on the side with like a number or reference, or reference sigil. And there's a lot of really interesting uh, verdigris that's just been painted on there to add a lot of interest to that. Uh, around the back, we've got this like armoured plate here as well with a skull on it, a different colour on there, just black, but with some really sharp, consistent edge highlighting that's just been done all over there. I really like the mottled effect on the um, on the, the armour panelling. So that weathering and sort of like uh, build up of detritus or, or material on there is actually really mottled. Uh, and it almost makes it look like it's a, a kind of like a camouflagey kind of rust kind of thing, which is which is quite quite interesting. Um, but again, the really rich, warm tones used with red for those uh, that's on the eyes and also for that, almost like the laser weaponry here on top as well is, is really interesting. But that's this awesome secondary armager, uh, custom armager that we've created for our clients. Yeah, it's a cool little pairing. If anyone knows, if they are based on something like official, yeah, yeah. Um, if anyone knows like the story that they're from or the book they're from or anything, then let us know in the comments. I'd love to know more. Um, yeah. And we've got the platinum level Silent King. The X. cherry on the cake, yeah. 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 Um, this, I mean, this model is absolutely crazy. Well, um, bef before we jump into the model, let's tease people with the men here. Because they, cause they, 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 of, they often, get, often get overlooked. Everyone focuses on that. But I, I've, I wanted to show these off because they really do have uh, some, some really decent work that's been done on them in the sense of the marbling and all those kind of things on the model as well. Yeah, so, we can start with those. Um, so the whole thing's been painted to platinum level, like I said. Um, the general spec for the, the men here is, was a kind of black marbly, black and grey or black and blue highlight marbly look um, with the like magenta uh, vein in. glow and, yeah. and in, in the veins yeah, and, and things like that. So that was kind of the spec for, for that one. Um, obviously it ties in as an entire piece with all three of the models really. Yeah. But yeah, they kind of frame the model really well, and and, and Adam, who's worked on this, has has, has really done a, a great job with sort of like balancing the model vibrancy and also desaturation. So 
marble with with some of the colours and things that are that are in the sort of like the the, the spec that our client provided. The marble needed to be like a really dark kind of color to contrast the kind of like purple magenta -y kind of glow effects from the orbs and things and the energy at the bottom that's, that's making the, the men here levitate but then not going too crazy with the colors on the actual marble or the veining so that you, you've still got a really dark piece but the eye is instinctively drawn to all those little details be it the veining or be it the the, the brighter and more saturated glow effect that's on there and I do really like that the bases that our client chose. We had a, a bit of a conversation with the client backwards and forwards about the actual specific bases on these because um, they wanted something that contrasted the model quite well but didn't take away from the model um, and didn't want to go down the route of just like a, a grey kind of tone. They wanted something a bit warmer. Um, so there's this really kind of like reddish brown kind of like earthworks kind of thing with those splashes of green to contrast the magenta and pink with the tufts. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the awesome men here's from the project. Um, let's get on. Let's go on to the to, to the main event. To the, you can you can grab them from there. Um, yeah, let's get to the main model because there is a lot to talk about on this. So the client is planning on doing a full Necron army with us, and he wanted to get things started with a big centerpiece model, platinum level, obviously. Um, probably the most like notable huge character model for Necrons as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a specific dynasty that I have no idea how to pronounce, as I do with most of the uh, <laughs> most of the Necron dynasties. But I think it's something like Sarakura or something like that. It's like the one that's dark. You def of, you've definitely done a better job than I would I think have done. It's I think it's Sarakura. Um, people in the comments can correct me if I'm wrong, um, or just give me a little thumbs up if I'm right. Uh, validation from the listeners would be nice. <laughs> uh, the, the viewers would be nice. Um, However, obviously, it's a silent king, so it, it had a bit of uh, creative freedom in terms of changing the colour scheme. And there was a few specifics that I think they spoke to you about on the phone call, and you both went over and decided how to tie the kind of teal colour of the dynasty yeah. into the silent king model and change some things, make them unique as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the first thing was that, that we were given a reference, a bit of reference artwork of the colour scheme, and it incorporated that magenta, kind of like a cyan, and then like there was a, a, a golden accent, obviously, with like uh, a lot of the sort of more detailed and decorative parts of the, of the miniature. Oh, it's actually a lord, I think, that the client provided as a reference image. Um, and obviously translating that onto a much bigger, more detailed, intricate model that has not only one character on it, but it has two bodyguards, plus then you've got the men here, plus then you've got the actual dais that he's levitating on. There's there's a lot more to kind of overlay that colour scheme onto. So there was a really in-depth conversation and meeting with a well, fair few meetings with the client just to really go over the best way to section the model and place those colours relative to kind of like what they represent on the miniature. So for example, on the Lord. Uh, the Lord had um, like bluer kind of like armor, but the main exoskeleton was done in like a more of a black kind of like a, a gray black kind of kind of colorway. So then deciding which parts of the miniature are going to have that, which parts of the miniature aren't aren't going to be like the more blue armored, and then with all of that, trying to frame the main character of the piece, which is obviously the Silent King. So what? Adam, myself, and between conversations between myself, Adam, and, and, and the client, all those conversations that I had and that we, I went through, we decided to really use the majority of the gold, mainly on the Silent King, to use him as the focal point for the piece, use the majority of the, of the Siam for the cape so that it contrasted in a, almost like a primary colour tri uh, tridic split between, on the piece, so that the eye is drawn to the Silent King, but at the same time, you notice the splashes of those colours on the various parts of the of the other things, like the bodyguards and the satan that's obviously like being sort of held in that part of the top of the miniature, uh, and all the orbs. Now, one of my favourite things that we actually done um, is is use the, the the darker tones purely on the dais and really strip back any of the bluer armoured sections and, and and only really use. The black to contrast the the, the magenta and, and uh, the magenta tones that are on the piece. So, for example, all the orbs, the satan, um, and even on the weapons, like for example, the glaives that the uh, the two bodyguards have got. But what Adam chose to do off his own back, which I think is a really inspired choice, is just drop a splash of that kind of like cyan colorway on this on this glaive here, on this right-handed bodyguard. There's like a diamond in the middle of the haft. Um, and, and Adam just chose just to use that cyan there to, to really create a focal point on that part of the glaive, um, which I think worked really, really well. Um, 
and the, for, for me, I, I genuinely think this is probably one of my favourite pieces that we've done in, in so far in 2024. Um, I, I just think there's loads of awesome little details on the model which you can spend ages looking at and, and start noticing all the work and effort and time that's been put into it. And obviously with a platinum piece, the amount of work that goes into all the levels of glazing uh, that are across every aspect, the dais, the cloth, the, the glow effects, the gold non-metallic metal, the silver non-metallic metal, the black armoured areas, the blue armoured areas. There's there's so many hours of investment that have gone into this to, to create a truly jaw-dropping centrepiece model for a collection, which is what you get with a platinum level model. Um, I, I For me, I, I love the subtlety of the glow effects on the Silent King. So on his shins, for example, You've got the pink glow from the dais, or the sort of the, the, the sort of uh, the I don't know what it's called, but the Necron kind of like pathway circuitry or whatever you want to call it in the in the foot plate of the dais. The the subtle uh, sort of pink glow that resonates up and radiates up the the legs and the shins of the Silent King is just really really well done. I often find that OSL is really sometimes done too much, and it kind of kills the look of a model. Adding it suddenly like this for me just is it just feels a bit more natural and how it would actually be if the model was in daylight rather than kind of like a, a, a darker environment. Um, but yeah, Adam's done a phenomenal job on this. I, I, I truly, truly, I'm gonna find it really difficult to let this one go from the studio. Tearing up a little bit. He's got a little yeah. bit of throat there. <laughs> I am gonna find this really hard to let this one go because I do genuinely love it and would love to, to have it myself as, as my own piece. But, um, but yeah, I hope our client is over the moon with it. And um, I just want to say, um, as always, you know, we hugely appreciate the opportunity to, to bring to life models at this, this quality uh, here at Siege. You know, it's something that it is hard to let go to, to a client at the end of a project, you know, uh, having something painted this exquisitely. And, um, and yeah, I, I'll be very sad to see it go. And I just want to say a big, huge thank you from all the team here at Siege and myself for, for the opportunity to, to paint it to, to this level. If you're interested in a commission with us here at Siege Studios for a project, be it an army, a centerpiece character, or something to add to your collection, then please don't hesitate in getting in touch with us through the link in the description of this video. As ever, a huge thank you for watching from all the team here and myself at Siege Studios. A massive thank you. I'll see you on the next one very soon.